Hi, everybody, and welcome back to video number two in chapter 19. And when we left off, we were looking at summarizing income reporting under both absorption costing and variable costing. So you will see that absorption costing will, the, the uh, income effect will be the same if we produce what we sell. But if, our, if we produce more than what we sell here, absorption costing is going to have greater income reported than variable will because that, those units that we did not sell are sitting in inventory and have not yet been expensed. Now, eventually they will be when they're sold. And in our example, that was exactly what happened in the third year when we produced less than what we sold. And in that case, absorption costing will re result in a lower um, income than variable will. And that's exactly what you see here. But over the course of those three years, we produced exactly what we sold. So the total income is the same under both uh, absorption and variable costing uh, over that three-year period. Okay, how can absorption costing result in overproduction? Ooh, my favorite subject. Uh, here, we use that same calculation um, where we uh, produced here 60,000 units under absorption costing. Now, this is still absorption costing and 100,000 units of uh, under a different scenario. And what that shows you is the direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead are all the same under both scenarios. But I am, my cost per unit at 60,000 is $10 per unit. That's the example we used in the previous slides. But here we're adding another 40,000 units that we produced. So that gives us a total of 100,000 units into 600,000. And that changes that to $6 per unit instead of $10 per unit. And so my total product cost per unit changes from $25 to $21 per unit because of that effect in absorption costing. Now, income under absorption costing then, as we previously said, here we have 60,000 produced and 60,000 sold. We made 580,000. But here we produced 100,000 units and sold only 60,000 for Ice Age Company. And in that scenario, we are, um, I have to do that quickly on my calculator, I have 820,000 less 300, or uh, 820,000 less 580,000, that's 240,000. And essentially what that is, is that fixed cost that has not yet been sold here in, and I've got 40,000 of them, 40,000 units times, uh, what was that fixed cost per unit? Um, and, and that represents, rather than my calculating it out here, that represents the fixed costs that are still in, in ending inventory if we make more than we sell. Okay. So um, here, variable costing is the same. Whether we make 60,000 or 100,000, it still reports that we make 580,000, a truer picture of our true income that we generated here. And the reason for that is our fixed costs are a period costs 
that are not that are are expensed in the current period. There's no delaying waiting for that 40,000 units, the difference between 100,000 and 60,000 until that gets sold, that's not going to ripple through the uh income statement in a uh, in a uh absorption costing scenario. Okay, pretty interesting, right? So, how does that affect planning production? Um, oftentimes, your manufacturing people have bonuses based on income and how well they control costs. So, if they know this, there is a temptation for them to overproduce a little bit. So that, that, and then that brings your inventory level up. And maybe you don't, you can't sell it. So every time they do that, they ratchet inventory up a little bit. And that's costly. That's not in the best interest of the company. That's a paper scenario. Whereas variable costing, that's a true picture. Again, variable costing is not permitted under generally accepted accounting principles. So now in this slide, we're going to determine the product selling price and analyze some special orders. There's a three-step process for determining the selling price. Now, this is a target price um, based on a target markup. Now, I wish that selling prices were that easy. You know, oftentimes there's competitive pressures. And in my mind, we sell the product at what the market will bear. But it's good to have a, um, a target from the standpoint of determining whether we can be competitive or not. We can look and say, okay, I'm going to determine this product cost using absorption costing and then determine a target markup on that product cost, say 30% or something, and then add that target markup to the product cost to find the target selling price. Then the next step, which they don't show here, is you go out and you say, can I sell it for that? If you can, great. If you can't, then more analysis needs to be done. But in this case, um, we had absorption cost was full absorption cost was $25. And we're going to throw another 60% of markup on top of that. So we take 60% of that $25 and that gives us $15. So I'm going to try to sell that little beauty for $40 a unit. Okay, special orders. We get those all the time. We need to cover all our fixed costs and our variable costs over the long run. And since fixed costs are not going to change, we should accept special order pricing, special orders, if the price exceeds the variable costs over the short run. That's an important concept here. So here, if I sell this thing, for $22 a share or $22 a, a unit and my variable costs are $17 a unit, that results in a contribution margin of $5,000. Under a fully absorbed basis, that $17 would have been maybe $25, which would give the impression of us not making money on that order. The fixed costs don't change on a per unit basis. I didn't say that well. They don't change in total. Okay, everybody see that? Okay. Now, for services, same kind of thing. I've got revenue of 35,000, my variable costs are 30,000, I'm going to make 5,000. Now, under variable costing, here I have 120 flights, cost me $50,000 per flight. Well, that must be a pretty small airplane. Um, and that's $6 million. 
Variable expenses, wages, fuel and oil, food and beverages, 3.6 million. So my contribution margin is 2.4 million. In addition, I have some depreciation and rent of 720,000 gives me a um, total income of 1.68 million. Okay. So we want to apply the contribution margin ratio for business decisions. The contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin divided by net sales. Okay. They say sales in this slide, but keep in mind it's net sales. So we have two territories here, both selling the same amount of stuff. And we have variable cost of goods sold and variable selling and administrative costs. So the contribution margin is 672,000 and 708,000. And if I divide that into my net sales here, my contribution margin ratio is 56% and 59% respectively. Okay. And what that means is that's the percent of sales that remain after we subtract out our variable expenses. All right contribution margin by product line here, we're going to analyze the contribution margin by product line. And can that can impact managerial decisions? Do we need to increase selling price? Do, how can we maybe decrease variable costs per, in cost of goods sold per unit? How about increasing selling efforts? You can jiggle those around in an analytical situation and, and determine your optimal condition. So here in this scenario, um, we have our contribution margin of 60% and 55% for hockey skates and figure skates. Okay. All right. Now, uh, in Appendix 19, we're going to convert income under variable costing to income under absorption costing. I already went through that a little bit, but this chart shows that pretty clearly here. Companies must use absorption costing for external reporting and for that matter, tax reporting. But income under variable costing is restated to that under absorption costing using the following formula. Now, this gets a little complicated, but I think you'll see it. Income under absorption costing is going to be equal to the income under variable costing plus the fixed overhead in ending finished goods inventory. That's begin ending less what was in beginning. In other words, the change. Um, and so in this scenario, before we had 200,000 that was the same 200,000 I talked about earlier, 20,000 units times $10 of fixed cost per unit is 200,000. That's when we produce more than we sell. But in the, but in the third year, um, we sold less than we produced. So that results in, in a difference of 200,000 the other way. Under absorption costing. Okay, I think you want to study this a little bit and make sure this is clear in your minds. All right, that concludes chapter 19. And when we return, we'll talk about chapter 20. Until that time, bye for now.